Greetings to you today in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Pastor Duke here, coming to you today just before Christmas. I'm not Santa Claus and I'm not Jesus Christ. I'm just someone that wants to take and help you to draw near to Jesus Christ. And I hope you take and do that today. I want to put Christ back into your Christmas. Praise the Lord. Today, I want to wish every one of you a very, very Merry Christmas, especially to those that take and try to help me so many times to take and to uh, reach out to other people through the worldwide prayer and uh, through uh, taking and witnessing to different people. I want to thank Lana Stedman today. She is a sister Janelle Stedman and uh, I remember Janelle going all the way back to Galveston. And I remember Lana going all the way back to Galveston. And that's been a long, long time ago. But I want to wish Lana and Janelle a very Merry Christmas. And then I would like to wish Merry Christmas to all of those people that are in Scotland and in England and in Wales that we knew and uh, had taken and maybe won to the Lord. And I pray maybe this broadcast today might win someone else to the Lord Jesus Christ. And you would take the X out of your Christmas and put Christ back into it. Today, I'd like to talk to you about then he passed by. Then he passed by. Reading from St. Mark chapter 10, verse 46, it says they came to Jericho. And as he went out of Jericho with his disciples, a great number of people, Blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the highway begging. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, thy son of David, have mercy on me. And then many charged him, saying that he needs to hold his peace. But he cried out the more, a great deal, thy son of David, have mercy on me. Let me say something today. People gather for all types of reasons. And I hope and pray today that maybe you have gathered together to listen to my broadcast, or maybe you're listening to it from YouTube uh, or from Facebook. Wherever you're listening to it, I want you to know that Jesus Christ wants to pass by in your life. And not only that, he wants to knock on your door. Jesus Christ wants to knock on your door today. And he would love if you would open that door and ask him to come into your life. Blind Bartimaeus heard the crowds coming his way. He could not see because he was blind. There's some of you today that you may listen to this broadcast and you may be blind spiritually. I hope and pray that before this broadcast is over, that maybe your eyes would be open and you might be able to see Jesus Christ or you might be able to understand who he really is. He is not just the second person in the Godhead. He is the Godhead. The Bible said that it pleased the Father that in him all of the fullness of the Godhead should dwell bodily. And you're completing him who is ahead of all principality and power. So I want you to see Jesus Christ today. Why don't you just take and call out to him? The Bible says in Romans 10, 13, for whosoever shall call upon him or the name of the Lord shall be saved. So Jesus heard blind Bartimaeus and he commanded him to be called unto him. And they called the blind man saying to him, be a good comfort, rise, he calleth thee. And he cast in away his garment rose and came to Jesus Christ. And Jesus answered and said unto him, what wilt? thou that I should do unto thee. Jesus has the same question for you today. What would you have Jesus Christ to do for you today? Do you need salvation? Do you need an opening of the understanding of who he is? The blind man said unto him, Lord, that I might receive <coughs> my sight. Many of you are blind today. And I pray and hope that Jesus Christ would open your sight. I remember when we started the church in Galveston. I was very, very young in the Lord. Yet I was taken and I was going to open a church up. 
because Jesus Christ had done so much for me. He had filled me with the Holy Ghost. I never heard about speaking in tongues. I never heard about baptism in Jesus' name. But oh, I want you to know that God took and sent someone my way and they opened uh, my understanding. And then I prayed and God revealed to me who he really was. Anyway, I took and remember how that we'd never took and uh, ever seen anyone that would fill with the spirit of the devil that was demon possessed. I heard this barber talk about it a lot of times that came to the church that I had been going to. And he would talk a lot of times about demon possessed people, but it didn't really have a lot of meaning. But when we started the church in Galveston, we had a young man that started coming to church. And every time he would come down to the altar and begin to pray, something would happen. And he'd start screaming out and he would go mad. Sometimes he would take and he would just utter words that we, you know, we, we just would be, I guess, uh, uh, not able to comprehend that somebody in church would be uttering. And so we took and we began to pray for him. And then somebody told me, they said, Pastor Duke, I think he has a devil in him. And uh, so we took and we began to pray for him. And we began to pray and ask God to cast the devil out, but nothing happened. And so finally, I asked our church to go on a fast. And we began to fast for a whole week. And when the weekend came, when Sunday came, and Brother Greg come down to the altar, it was just like a super faith got a hold of me. And I went down there and I began to take and I began to look at Greg. And I said, in the name of Jesus Christ, devil, I bind you and in the name of Jesus Christ, come out of him. All of a sudden, Greg screamed out. And when he screamed out, he took and he fell out on the floor and foam began to gush out of his mouth. I'd never seen anything like that happen. And he laid on that floor for a few minutes there with the foam gushing out of his mouth. And then all of a sudden, he got back up, began to lift his hands to the Lord and began to cry out to Jesus Christ, Lord, fill me with your spirit. Lord, baptize me with your spirit. All of a sudden, he began to speak in tongues as the Spirit of God gave the utterance. God filled Greg with the Holy Ghost left there in Galveston, Texas, as we looked on. And then he began running around the church, praising God, thanking him because Jesus Christ had passed by that night and had cast the devil out of him. Oh, I want you to know God filled him with his spirit. And I want you to know that God can fill you with his spirit. He can wash your sins away. The apostle Peter said in Acts chapter two, verse number 38, repent, be baptized every one of you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. And you shall be filled with the Holy Ghost for the promises unto you and to your children and to all of those that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. I guess over the last few months, uh, I have heard of more, the people that had come to the Lord under me pass away. Over in High Wycombe and uh, uh, Oxford and over in uh, Wales, there's been many people that have been sick. And then there's been many people that was from a church in Port Walton Beach that have passed away. A lot of the ministers that I went to uh, Texas Bible College with, I have found out that many of them have passed away. Good friend of mine over here in Florida, near Blenchtown, Brother Ron Baker passed away. All of these have passed away. And I don't know why God allowed me to live after I took and was in the hospital uh, so long. And after I got these infections that was incurable, yet God has allowed me to live. And that's the reason why I'm on here today. I want to do more for Jesus Christ. And I want him to take and to know, Jesus, I love you above everything else. I may have failed you. I may have taken 
and not did everything that you wanted me to be able to accomplish. But I want you to know that I love you and I thank you for one day allowing me to be born again. You see, I remember that day that you passed by in my life. And so there's many people today that Jesus Christ is passing by in their life. I remember about a little newspaper boy, and I think it was up in Chicago that Jimmy took and sold newspapers. And we find that uh, Jimmy took, and he would get out on the street, he'd get on the corner, and he would take and he would begin to scream out, you know, the news, and for people to buy his new paper. Around Christmas time came and the streets were crowded and the highway was crowded. And all of a sudden, as Jimmy was selling newspaper on the corner, a car lost control. And that car took and it ran up on the sidewalk and it struck Jimmy. And it knocked him down. And Jimmy fell down. And people began to take and run up to him. And they called, you know, for the ambulance. And the ambulance came and it loaded Jimmy into it and took him to the emergency room. In the emergency room, they treated him and they placed him into a room with another young boy named Johnny. And there was Jimmy laying in the bed. Johnny looked over to him and he began to talk to him. And Jimmy looked at him and said, Johnny, he said, I'm in so much pain. He said, I'm hurting all over. He said, Is, do you know if there's anything that can be done? And so Johnny took and he looked over at him and said, well, he said, I'll tell you what I do. He said, every night, he said, I take and I pray out to Jesus and I ask Jesus to take my pain away. And Jimmy looked at him and he said, Johnny, he said, you think that Jimmy, you think that Jesus would take and hear me and take my pain away? And Johnny looked at him and said, yes. So the actor, the lights go out. And after the nurses have gone, said so Jesus will come into this room. And all you've got to do is just call out to him and say, Jesus, please, please touch me. Please heal me. Please take away my pain. So we find that Jimmy that night took, after the lights went out, after the nurses had gone away, he began to cry out to Jesus. And Jesus did pass by that night, just like he wants to pass by in your life. And so Jimmy took and he cried out to him, Jesus, Jesus, please heal me. Please take away my pain. And that night, Jesus healed him and he took away his pain. The next morning, Johnny took he looked over in the bed of Jimmy and he began to cry out to him, Jimmy, Jimmy. But nothing happened. Jimmy just continued to lay there in the bed, not moving at all. Johnny took and cried out again, Jimmy, Jimmy, do you hear me? And there was no sound that came forth from Jimmy. You see, that night, Jesus had passed by and he took and he touched Jimmy. He healed him and he took him with him. There's a lot of people that Jesus has taken with him today. And if they were right with God, they're ready for the rapture of the sons of God. If they were truly born again, the Bible said as many as received him, to them he gave the power to become the sons of God. You need to be born again to become a son of God. You don't need to become a Pharisee after you become a son of God. 
You need to be led by the Spirit of God. And then you, are now, you need to allow Jesus Christ to continue in your life. Every time you slip, you take and get back up. And I want you to know today, right now, Jesus Christ can pass by in your life. I want to pray for you today. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I remember the night that you passed by in my life. And you begin to fill me with your spirit. Oh God, I begin to speak in tongues as your spirit gave the utterance. Lord, I thank you so much, God, that you allowed me to be baptized in your name. Lord, I'm asking you, God, to take. And everyone that hears my voice will take. And they will take and hear. You ask them, what would you have me to do? And they may cry out. Lord, heal my blindness or take away my pain and you will hear their cry today. You're able to take it to heal that pain without taking them with you. But if you choose to take them with you, Lord, I pray that they would be ready to meet you. And Lord, I'm asking God to let each and every one know that we need to be ready for the bride of Christ to be raptured from this world. You told me within 10 years, you were going to rapture the bride. And I want to be a part of that bride, Lord. Help me, God, to be ready. And help everyone that hears my voice to be ready. God bless you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.